go to you go to the scripture uh, to read what Jesus did. We're Christians. We follow after Jesus. We look at his example. We look at his life. We want to act like he acted. We want to talk. We say the things that he said. We want to respond to situations the way that he responded. If you were to be asked the question, give me the mission statement of Jesus. Like wrote, I uh, just read Luke chapter 19. Verse 10, to me, sums it up. Jesus came to save, to save the lost. Tonight I want to look at two points. Is to, and I think we're quite clear about what Jesus did and what his mission was about. It did me good. It does me good to see what he did. Hopefully I can be better implementing these two points into my life. You may be doing a really good job. This lesson may not pertain to you as much as it does to me. But anyway, bear with me for the next few minutes as we look at these two points. Jesus was about seeking and saving the lost. Point number one, Jesus was active. Jesus was involved. Jesus went to the villages. He went to the cities. He spoke and ate with sinners, with tax gatherers. He was with his friends. He went to the temple. He went to the synagogue. He went to the marketplace. Jesus was active. He took it. He took the message out. He didn't wait. So I look at myself. <clears throat> How am I doing? Am I, am I going out? Am I getting myself in situations and environments that would allow me to have more exchange, allow me to have more opportunities to talk to others? You know, when I was listening to things that Jesus did, Jesus got out of his car. When you think about Jesus had he had several relationships with with women. And back in that culture, men, or rather women, just did not talk to men other than their husband. And yet Jesus took that a step further and he broke that barrier. The comfort zone. He gathered with Sinners, with the tax gatherers, with the public. We need to get out of our comfort zone. We need to go beyond that, perhaps, which we have before. You know, when you look at other aspects, He's talking about the parables of Sunday morning. You can just start naming the soul, the dragon, the parable of the lost world, the parable of the lost coin, the lost sheep. And what did Jesus do? It was action. He saw. He was seeking. Jesus was involved. You know, sometimes we uh, might think it's a little bit uncomfortable to talk with people because we think that they don't want to hear what we have to say. Well, apparently that didn't bother me. Shouldn't bother us. Go back and think about 
the Sermon on the Mount. The concept of salt and light. They all conjure up ideas of involvement, of action. You know, what good is salt if it's left in shape? It doesn't do any good. You know, what good is light if it's shelter, if it's hidden. I think it's so important that we get involved in relationships, not only with our brethren, but those who are outside. When you think about action, you think about involvement, about the beginning of the church, Acts chapter 2, verse 40 through 45. Read that, it's quite clear. The brethren were involved, there were relationships. We need to be involved with each other. Because who knows when that opportunity is going to come about when someone does drift. Someone does become lost. We need to have that relationship established so that we can be there for that person. Galatians chapter 6, verse 10. First of all, familiar with us. We need to be serving. We need to do good to all men. To all men. Especially those household of God. I think it's very important for me to take on the responsibility of reaching out. You know, there's no doubt that Jesus did a lot of sitting and he did a lot of thinking. But I think it's apparent that he did more seeking and reaching he did sit and think. I need to be the same way. Mark chapter 10. Verse 45. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life a ransom for me. You know, the second point, Jesus understood the value of serving. He understood that people could connect with those who were reaching out and serving. Talk about service. Blake talked about being selfless, humility. Those really are characteristics that this society embraces. I think it would be fair to say that maybe our, our society embraces self reliance, independence. And in my way of thinking, if those two things aren't under control, service, humility, <coughs> just can't be reached. But someone who is self-reliant, independent, become arrogant, and proud. Two things that I need to stay away from. Going back to Galatians 16. You know, why do you think that Jesus said, serve all, do good all? Well, I think it's because that is 
is our way <coughs> of influencing other people with Jesus. You know, if you know, what good is leaven? What good again is salt? What good is light? If they're not working. And by me, by you, promoting Jesus, by us serving others, by finding opportunities to reach out, in effect, we are Jesus' legs, with his hands, his mouth. Gandhi, a rather famous Hindu philosopher, teacher, said it this way, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. You know, and I think Gandhi borrowed that from the Apostle Paul. And he said in Philippians 2, 3, and 4, we need to esteem others more highly than you do yourself. You know, just like anything else, service is a mindset. <coughs> it's, I believe it was a mindset that Jesus was implementing on that long sermon. Matthew 5, 6, and 7. 5, 6, and 7 to me was Jesus making the, or creating the new foundation. And this foundation was, if you're going to serve me, if you're going to believe in me, you've got to get your heart. check from day to day. Is our heart right? So, what can I do to help build the Lord's church? I can be involved in people's lives seeking for ways to better serve 